Well, I want to welcome everybody again to The Musician Beat, which is our series of check-ins with all of our orchestral musicians. And we are thrilled to have uh, somebody here with us who I've known for years. In fact, Kara is going to be able to <laughs> It's going to be able to tell me how long we've been working together in a second. Um, but she's a, been a, a violinist in the symphony now for um, quite a long time. And we also are um, frequently seeing each other around school and stuff since our kids have been um, at some of the same schools over the years. So, Kara, it's great to have you on the program. And thanks so much for doing this. Yeah, it's a pleasure being here. Thank you. Yeah, well, tell us a little bit about yourself, kind of, um, you know, where you're from and, and your history and music and, and anything else you think we'd like to hear about. Sure. Um, well, my name is Kara, and um, I am a violinist and a mom. Uh, I am mom and stepmom to five children, uh, ages well seven months today, and all the way up through thirteen. Um, so we are busy. Our children are doing um, in-person school. And so we're still running around doing all the usual things. Uh, while I'm also teaching violin lessons, I have a studio here in town of about, let's see, I think I have 19 students. And then uh, other than also playing in the symphony, I also coordinate and play for a lot of weddings in the Cedar Valley. So you keep yourself pretty busy, not just with family stuff, but sort of juggling the whole musician routine and, yes. you know, all the responsibilities of being a mom and, and taking care of the household. Um, so obviously this situation we find ourselves in this year with the pandemic and, and especially the impact on the performing arts or on anything that, you know, requires large gatherings has been huge. Um, and for you, it's, it's kind of interesting because on one hand you play in the orchestra, um, kind of a sort of a, a part-time job, you know, and then you also have your own studio, a, a lot of different work you do in music. So tell us a little bit about the range of musical activities that you have in your life, a little more detail on that. And then we can get into what has happened in this pandemic period? Sure. Uh, so my, my main job right now as a musician is um, teaching Suzuki violin. I have, like I said, 19 students. Uh, my youngest is six, and I have all the way up to adult students. Um, and that has been interesting uh, because um, while in years past it might have been really tricky to continue having lessons when we can't be in person. Um, we were able to move to using um, an online platform, which was, it had its good things and it had its bad things. Um, but overall, it was really nice to be able to continue and see everybody despite the fact that we had to social distance. Um, as far as the other job that I that I coordinate for and play for, as far as uh, weddings and special events, that was, that was a little trickier. Um, a lot of our special events were uh, postponed or canceled. Um, so in a normal year, we, we play multiple weddings, um, probably 10 or 12 or, or 10 or 20 different weddings. Um, this year we had six total and that was, that was tricky. Um, it, we missed it a lot. Our, our group of musicians in the area, a lot of them are symphony musicians. Mm -hmm. um, that was that was hard because that's a large portion of our summer income and our um, weekend duties. And we just didn't have that anymore. That was tricky. You know, that's a really interesting point. And I think maybe all of our viewers may not be aware that folks who play in the symphony, not just here, but I, I think a lot of uh, orchestral musicians frequently play other types of gigs um, throughout the season, doing weddings, doing other special events. In addition to teaching, I mean, we've heard from others about sort of what's happening, teaching at the university level or teaching at different levels, but you're in this very interesting situation. Um, I wonder if having, uh, I guess I could say like a variety of things you do has given you a little bit more cushion as a musician in the sense that, well, the teaching is continuing somewhat, even if the gigs are down a little bit. I mean, what's your perception of that? Um, well, I mean, performances in general are just out right now because people aren't gathering and when they are gathering um they are you know we've had we've had quite a few weddings where they were still happening but the number of people they could have at their ceremony or at their event was limited and so they had to rather than lose out on you know special guests that they really wanted to attend they had to maybe eliminate the musician portion and go with canned music and i think that was really difficult for a lot of our clients because 
you know, they, there's a reason that they wanted like a string quartet or a violin cello duo is because, you know, it's live music is special to everybody, but that just, that made it really difficult. Um, any, any of the performances and the aspect there. Um, luckily this fall we were able to have some, but I, I wonder if the ones that we have for the remainder of the year will be able to continue now that, you know, things are spiking back up again and, I guess we'll just have to see what that looks like. Yeah, there's so much uncertainty. I mean, that's one of the most difficult things, not only just, you know, at the symphony, but just I think for all of us in general with life, you know, we're sort of looking at our plans going, well, what's going to happen? What's not going to happen? And for you, of course, that's your livelihood. So that's got to be really tricky. Um, Maybe to um, maybe to just stay on that topic for um, just another minute. I know that not having the work is sort of unusual, but I know you're still seeing students. I mean, um, doing those lessons and working with the Suzuki school, what have been the positive aspects of continuing that work right now? Because obviously, you know, we, we sort of take it for granted sometimes. Hey, music is, I go to my music lesson every week and and I like music. It's great. But then it's gone. All of a sudden we realize maybe we took it for granted a little bit. What have been the feelings that have been, um, that you've been experiencing as you've worked with all these students across different ages? Well, I can say for one that, uh, within my studio, when we went completely, um, online with everything at first it was tricky like we had to figure out the technology side of things and that is not my forte um but uh with some help of some friends who um had done it i was actually on maternity leave when everything actually took place and so i had a little bit of time to see how everybody else was doing it and learn from mistakes and things like that but um i feel that all of my students actually progressed more because of the time that they were online because so many other things were cut out and they weren't able to go to their social or the, their social things or their sporting events. And school was a little bit more, um, at least while school was still in session at the beginning of all of this pandemic, um, they were, they were doing everything from home. And so they were able to fill in more times of practice time and, you know, the listening assignments that maybe get pushed by the, by the wayside if they're really busy with everything. So, um, I know that wasn't in our, in my community and friends of other music teachers. I know that wasn't everybody's experience, but mine, I felt like it was a time of everybody kind of putting more effort and focus into music and, um, listening to online performances and, um, watching movies based on music. I mean, it was, I found it to be kind of not refreshing, maybe that's not the best word, but <laughs> I found it to be helpful um, to have that extra time and focus placed on everything. That's a really good observation. And I think that there are opportunities um, to advance ourselves as musicians. Uh, it can be difficult for professionals who uh, I've heard a lot of people say, well, I don't really have as many tangible goals right now. Um, yeah. But, but you know, as a student, you know, that there are some of those goals still there and maybe not as many of the distractions. So that's that's good to hear that there's been some positivity coming out of it. And I'm sure it's great to see your students on a regular basis, even if sometimes you see them on a screen, just to have that connection. Yes, yes. And honestly, um, while music is tricky online, especially to do certain sounds, just they don't come through as well. <laughs> um, it was it was really nice to be able to, um, I feel like my students really listened in even more and tried to figure things out more for themselves because I couldn't reach through the screen and help them and place your hand here and do this with that. And so I feel like that was that was really helpful on their end in the learning aspect of things. Well, we've all we've all learned a ton about how to communicate and do many sort of normal things through these digital media. So. Um, you know, I think is the learning curve was steep at the beginning, but it's true. Everybody's getting a little better at using these tools right now. Um, of course, the symphony thing, uh, symphony is using some of these things as well. And, and we're hoping to have um, a, a more ensembles going on throughout the year. It looks unlikely that we'll do a ton of um, performances for audiences anytime soon. But um, we're hoping that we can have you on stage for one of the upcoming sessions. Um, talk a little bit about your history with the symphony because you have this really interesting musical background here. You're from the area and you've been doing all kinds of music here for many years. Fill us in just a little bit on your special history as a musician here in the Cedar Valley and with the symphony and you and I go back quite a ways too. Yes, we do. Uh, so I am from this area. I, um, as a small child, I started doing violin lessons at the UNI Suzuki school and, um, continued 
playing all the way through high school. And then even as a, uh, a junior in high school, um, I auditioned and was accepted to be a member of the Waterloo Cedar Falls Symphony. And that was your first year, actually. So I think that puts us at 18 years, if this Sounds were Sounds about a, right. Yeah, <laughs> I think so. Um, so that was, it was really enjoyable to have that experience as a, as a student still, um, you know, just growing up and being surrounded with, um, some of my teachers that I had grown up, uh, learning from. And now we're, um, I guess we're my peers in, in performing. That was a really great experience. Yeah. It's been, it's been amazing to work together so long. I mean, uh, I think you probably are one of our, our last high school, um, symphony musicians after you, I don't think we've had too many other players at the high school level play in the orchestra. It used to be maybe a little bit more common 20, 30 years ago with the orchestra, but has become less common. So I, I think a, that's a testament to your abilities. And also, um, it is just a, a wonderful story, you know, and we've known each other since before we had kids and, and we were both kind of kids ourselves in a way. I'm a little older <laughs> than you, but not too much older. Um, <laughs> So, and it's been a rewarding relationship for me too. And, and I think it really points to the aspect of community around the symphony. And that, you know, that is for many of us, I think what we're missing the most. I mean, you can speak about that for a moment, just what it's like not to have the regular routine of seeing all of our colleagues together at the symphony. Right. I would agree with that. Um, that's, that's very difficult um, because so much of our um, friendship and musicianship is based on the community um, and not just being a solo musician and playing by yourself, but um, having that ensemble experience and getting a chance to, to just see friends that have been friends for, for many years. I mean, the joy of social media nowadays is we can still keep in touch that way, but um, it's, it's really difficult. It's, it's, it's sad, really. Yeah, it's not quite the same. And we felt that every time we've gotten together this fall, the comment everybody said is, man, I've just missed being together, you know, and yes, and yes, making music and making together. Music together. Yeah. yeah. So um, we'll wrap up here in a sec. But before we go, uh, I need to know, because you obviously are the maestra at balancing everything, kids, music, you know, your own practice time, all the teaching you do, the playing. What's your secret to keeping everything kind of in control with five kids and all the responsibilities you have? Uh, that's a great question. Um, I guess just finding that balance. Um, I have a very helpful family. Um, my husband and my children are wonderful at, um, you know, making sure that I have that time to focus on some work and, uh, all the background behind the scenes stuff that, that goes on, like practicing and, um, communicating with people. Um, and so I, I think a lot of that is a testament to, um, my family and how they are, you know, very, uh, supportive of what I do and, um, having, you know, my, my mother is wonderful at helping with the children so that I can be a part of symphony rehearsals and weddings and just having, having family nearby and trying to maintain some sense of focus and <laughs> sanity during the pan pandemic has, um, I think we've all just learned how to kind of roll with it and make that happen. Yeah, well, I, I know your family reasonably well, and it's a great, great family and wonderful, wonderful people. And I think you are fortunate, but but in a lot of ways, that's a reflection of you. And so um, you should be very proud. And, and we are very proud of you at the symphony and can't wait to be together on stage again. So um, I really appreciate you taking some time to talk, talk with us today. And hopefully we will be um, hearing and seeing you on stage pretty soon. Yeah, that would be great. All right, Kara, thanks so much. Yes, thank you.